Ken Leinbach. So I was um, meditating on <laughs> to be an abundant community. And in the process of doing that, it was actually really fun, I came up with a, a four-step theory for finding abundance. And, um, and the first thing that I discovered is that it starts with the question of help. I need your help. That's the first step of finding um, abundance. And so, in actual fact, in this very moment, I need your help. Because <laughs> I have really bad arthritis in my ankles and I can't jump down the way I used to when I was younger. So I'm, I need actually some volunteers to help me get down. So I'm wondering if I could have like five people come here. And uh, hold on, hold on, stay, stay right there, stay right there. Wow, there is abundance in this community. Can you put a block under behind each wheel? <laughs> well, behind the wheel. <laughs> and then if and then if someone that would stand in two of you would stand in front of me and hold the, the bar very, very firmly. Yeah, like that, like that. And then maybe one person behind just to make sure I don't die. <laughs> now we're going to try to get myself down from here. You guys got it? We got it. Uh -huh. You're spotting. And you're spotting just in case back there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, my Step one. This is just a theory that I made up last week, and I said, yeah, this is pretty good. And so one of the things at the end of all this, I'm going to share a document with you that has this sort of four-step theory, and I need your help flushing it out so that we can actually make it better, okay? But step number one is I need your help, and I really need your help. And here's why. The reason is I don't know how much you pay attention to the news, and I don't know when you're driving and you're listening to National Public Radio or 88.9 or whatever your favorite station is, what you're thinking about, but for the last well, I'm 48 years old, and, so, and the beginning of my career was all teaching. I was a high school teacher. And then, um, but what I, I, I became very passionate about getting kids outside, because I saw the power that it had on their academic performance. That's what I was interested in. Went to graduate school, but at the same time, when I was in graduate school, I was thinking, I really want to know more about this world. And in the process of doing that, this was 17 years ago, 15, 16, 17 years ago, I got really scared. Because I saw what was coming in the future. I saw that our population at that point was about 6 billion. Today it's about 7 billion. In another 25 years, it's going to be about 9 billion. That's a fact. And I, and I learned that the, the oceans are depleted by 90% in their fishery stock from where they were in 1950. And at 1.5 billion people on this planet, the only protein that they get is from where? The oceans. That's just one little detail. I could go on and on and on. I mean, you know, the people talk about, well, let me ask, do you believe in global warming? <laughs> do you not believe in global warming? Let's be, let's be strong here. Global warming is not a belief system. Yeah. All right? <laughs> Climate change is a fact. You can quibble about why it's happening, but there's absolutely no question that a whole chunk of ice the size of France has, in the last two years, disappeared from the polar ice caps. You can't quibble about that. That's climate change. What's going on right here? Maybe localized, maybe not. We're talking about the winter right now. That's climate change. Climate change is happening, all right? I put all this together in my head. 17 years ago, I was on an airplane ride coming from Phoenix to Milwaukee, and it just hit me like a, like, this is one of those epiphanal moments. It's like, holy crap. We don't have a chance, or do we? And so then I started thinking about it, and I said, okay, what can I do? I'm just a guy. I'm not a visionary leader. I'm not a visionary leader. I'm just a guy. I'm a high school teacher. What can I do about this situation? And I started weighing my assets, personal assets. What, can, what am I good at? What am I not good at? I'm not a politician, you know, change is needed. Who makes change? Authors, maybe? You know, a thought person? Well, I'm a teacher, that's what I do. So what can I do? Well, I, I meditated on it and said, okay, well, I really don't, I have little kids. 
they don't even listen to me. So, so I'm not going to change anybody unless I can change me. So I started changing me. That's why if you see me today, I mean, I don't own a car. You know, I, I've got worms in my basement. I garden and all that kind of stuff. I mean, all that green stuff that at the time, green was a color when I was doing this stuff <laughs> back then. It wasn't that long ago. But, it was, um, but at any rate, um, the need is so great and I need your help, and I knew then that I could not do this alone. So what did I do? I was just sort of thinking about abundance. The Urban Ecology Center, if you've never been there, you gotta come. It's a place of abundance. Why? Because we know the need, and we know that we need you. And that actually is my second point in my newfound theory. I know that you can help me, is number two. I need help. And I know that you can help me. That's the second piece. How do I know that? Well, because I have discovered over my little life that when I start diving into somebody, that they have these amazing gifts of abundance that sometimes they don't even recognize themselves. Often they do. Every one of you can help me. Because this is not a pro the problem I'm talking about is not my problem. The t problem I'm talking about is everybody's problem. Everybody's problem. So I need your help, and you can help me. However, step three is in order for you to be able to help me, you need to know that you can. That's a step that you need to take to say, hey, I can do this. How does that happen? Well, there's a lot of ways it can happen, but one way is we can do that together. I can sit down with you and talk, and you can talk with me, and I can discover your gifts, and you can discover my gifts, and we can figure out how to help each other out. The more diverse the community, the more robust the abundance. And that's, that's what I find really spectacularly wonderful about this whole experience. So when I started at the Ecology Center, for those of you who don't know, I was alone in a double-wide trailer in the park. There was a whole bunch of people before me that I'm riding on the shoulders of, some of whom are, whom are in this room, who got to the point of having a trailer and a park that people cared about. When I got there, that's what we had with very little program, no computer, no copy machine, none of that stuff. And we had to figure it out. I needed help. So I started just pulling in anybody I could grab. My next door neighbor from the Netherlands was the person I said, hey, you're an auditor. Do you know anything about finance? Could you help me out with this personal checkbook that somehow I'm paying myself from? I don't quite get it. Um, <laughs> And so that was the beginning of a treasurer for our board. You know, we wanted to run canoe trips. This guy came in with a passion for running canoe trips. That's what it's really about, is finding people's passion, your passion, and matching it up for an abundant community. We have enough right here. It's right here. So this guy, Kim Cosmitis, comes in and says, I'd like to run a canoe trip. I said, you got any canoes? He goes, no. Oh, neither do I. <laughs> well, what do we do? So we put in our little newsletter, which was just an eight and a half by 11 thing that went out to about 150 people, saying, I bet some of you have a canoe in your backyard that you haven't used in two years. How about loaning it to us? If I could get eight of you to loan your canoe to us, I actually have a place in Shorewood. They let me, there, there's a, like a barn down there. They'll let me store it. I'll just give you a key. You can, it doesn't even have to be in your backyard anymore. You can use it anytime you want, as long as you let us use it too. And it worked. We got eight canoes, ran a canoe trip. Everybody loved it, ran another canoe trip, everybody loved it, ran another canoe trip. Someone from Rockwell International happened to be on that one, got excited about it. A week later, sent us a little note saying, hey, $5,000, buy yourself some canoes. <laughs> that was the beginning of our urban adventure program. That was abundance from within the community. Do you get it? Does this work? Yeah. Step one, what is it? Anybody remember? I need your help. Step two. I know, you, I know you can help me. I believe in you. I believe in you. I know you can help me. I've seen it over and over and over again. Step three, you need to know that you can. Step four, let's communicate. Let's do it together. Let's make this happen. That's how we know that there is enough right here. Got it? Are we, are we good time-wise? Are we done? All right, cool. 